not either being leader of the council or leader of the opposition. So uh, I'm used to unlimited time, so I'll try to discipline myself. Um, but it's, it, it's, uh, I think this is a budget that uh, I think I would have been extremely proud to present, and I think Steve's done a really good job in bringing this forward uh, with the help of Susie and all the rest of the, of the group. Uh, and also, I think it's right that we record our, our thanks, as always, to Chris Ward and the team. Um, but I think this is, this is really, really interesting. I think it's a budget that we can be proud of, not just in the administration, but I think actually across all the councillors and the officers who work at Portsmouth City Council. Because I think the, the difference between what we're seeing here and what we're seeing in other councils is dramatic. If we look to Hampshire County Council, and it's very good to have Councillor Brent here who will be able to, to talk about it, um, Hampshire County Council has put forward a budget that the Daily Mail has deemed as coming from the stingiest council in the country. Yeah. If even the Daily Mail is turning on the Conservatives uh, in Hampshire, something is clearly a bit nuts. So the proposal in Hampshire is about shutting half the tips in the, in the county, uh, cutting school crossing patrols, uh, turning the street lights off at night, uh, and cutting travel for the disabled. And then we look to Southampton, Hampton, who are on the edge of declaring bankruptcy, and they've, they've overspent by £11.8 million. They're looking for £30 million of cuts, and they're also turning the streetlights off at night. And then you look at the budget that we've got here, and this is something that, that people across all administrations have worked on. We have a very different budget. We have a budget here without cuts, but with investments. So there's no cuts to services. This is about extra income and about doing things more efficiently. So this is about strong financial control. I look, I have to say, at Southampton, and I look at the SIPFA report into their finances to say that in November, they'd only managed to make 38% of the savings they'd voted for in February. Now, that's terrifying lack of financial control. Now, that just would not be tolerated here. And none of us, from Chris Ward, the Chief Executive and the Council, none of us would, 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 would go for that. So I think we've got good, strong financial control here. Uh, we've looked at increasing the income. Uh, the port's profits of £8 million are, are really good. Uh, we brought um, Lakeside. And, and again, I'm, our Conservative colleagues, I think, split four ways on whether we should buy it. Some yes, some no. Some left the room and some abstained. Um, and I think we might see the same again with amendments later today. Um, we put money, we got money from commercial rents and from, uh, from solar panels. So I think this is a budget that we all collectively should be proud of. That we're investing 1.2 million quid in the cycle lane on Eastern Road where there was a fatality to make that bit really safe for, for people. We're looking at putting um, money into wheelchair accessible vehicles so that we buy them and rent them to, to the um, private, vehicle, private hire trade so that there's a better facilities across the city. There's extra street lights in the city going in to make the city safer for, uh, for women and girls. Um, the, com the, the contrast with Southampton and Hampshire is, is dramatic. Uh, we're investing in Bransbury Park, in Castle Road. So I think this is a, a budget we should be really proud of. We've preserved a youth service here in this city, and Hampshire has none. So I think, collectively, we should all be very proud of this. We should give our congratulations both to the, Steve and the administration and to the office for putting us together, and this is something we should unite behind. Finally, uh, Councillor Atkins' budget uh, amendment is interesting. It, I have to say, Councillor Atkins, I, I, I ask... Labour, PIP and the Lib Dems, if they will please remove their candidates in Cosham. You, Councillor Atkins, are the gift that keeps on giving. And we, you have given to us yet again. And I am so grateful for you, for the leaflets you will enable us to print. Um, you have, your, your generosity and kindness is great. And we'll be so sorry to see you go. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, I think this is a budget we should all be proud of. And I, I think we should all collectively be supporting it. Thank you. I think that's the shortest speech you've ever done, Gerald. Thank you, Thank you, Councillor Vernon Jackson.
Um, I have no one else indicating to speak, so I will call upon the Leader of the Council to sum up and ask whether he wishes to subsume any of the amendments put. Councillor Pitt. 